Okay, so we've built the basic email part of it, but what we really want to be able to do is we want to make this much, much more dynamic. We want to be able to pass in the name of a file as a variable. We want to have our email be able to send the variable. Uh, we want to be able to create that Excel file on the fly, not, having, not being dependent that it exists already. So for that, what do you think that we could do to modify our package to make this more dynamic? And I'm going to go ahead and edit this one here. So this way, it's hard-coded to use our report.xls. How can we make it more dynamic? A variable and an expression, do you say? Very good. So let's come up and make a variable. Let's call this file name and path. Let's make it a string. And let's put the name, uh, the file, the full path to our new Excel file name. So C colon new Excel file dot XLS. Very cool. Now Let's come back to our data flow task. We want to change the destination. So here's a question back from chapter 5. Do we change the Excel destination or do we change the connection manager? Which defines the file name? If you said connection manager, you're right. Okay. So I go to properties and I'm going to use an expression and in most situations, uh, usually like with a text file uh, with SQL Server, for example, you would use the connection string property. But in Excel, it's the Excel file path. So you go to your expression, grab your guy, bring it down there, make sure it comes up right, say OK. OK, you cool? going to be dynamic, right? Oh, you know what we forgot to do? Well, I we forgot to do a couple things. Number one, I forgot to go back to our script and tell our script to load up that variable, right? So let me bring in our file name and path here because our script, I was still hard coding the old one. Sorry about that. That was unintentional here. Remember our attachment? So I don't want this to be hard coded. I want this to be a variable now, right? So this is file name and path and value to string. Remember, for those of you working with VB, these are single, or, or these are parentheses, not brackets. And separate it to a new line so that we can see that there. Okay. So just that little block of code is all we changed. Okay. Very cool. Now, the problem that we had earlier was that this step failed. Well, what failed? I'm not going to show you just yet. I'm going to see if you can get it. I have. Let's just review what we've done. Step one, we changed file name and location to be a variable. Step two, execute the package. Our data flow task fails. Which part do you think fails, the source or the destination? This is a tricky one. Well, it's going to be the destination. You can see the source is cool. Why does the destination fail? You created, let's just make sure I understand, you created a brand new Excel file. Okay, whenever this package starts up, that Excel connection manager reads the value of that variable and creates that file. Like if we go down to the C drive right now, you'll see, uh, well, it, it didn't actually create it just yet. It hadn't gotten there yet. Uh, there's a reason I was skipping a step here. Um, when we go to the output here, let's find the Excel failed the pre-execute. It could not open the report table. Remember that was where we were putting the data into in our data flow task. Uh, if we go to the data flow destination, it's supposed to be putting it in the report table. Have you created a report table in that newly created spreadsheet? 
And guess what? Here's another thing that bites you on the you know what. When you load this package up, it goes through validation, right? And validation looks for the existence of tables and files. This file doesn't exist. That table doesn't exist yet. We, it is defined at runtime. So we actually have to go delay our validation procedures here. So we need to go down to our data flow task, to the properties, and let's tell it to delay validation. Okay, So set it to true. Let's go down here to the Excel destination, go to its properties, and we're going to change the validate external metadata. So we're setting it to false. Okay. Cool. So now the problem is going to be when we create this brand new file called new Excel file.xls, it's not going to have a report table, is it? So here's what you do. You just click the New button, copy, whatever suggested is, close, come over here, go back to your control, and grab yourself an Execute SQL task. And create table. So you're going to use your Excel connection now and you're just going to type it in and you're going to use report. This way you ensure that the table exists in the Excel spreadsheet prior to coming to the data flow task. Fire it up, creates the table, it can successfully now put the data into the table and then it can successfully send us the email. And so you can see it did, did create new Excel file, which in fact has a spreadsheet called report down at the bottom. And when we go into our inbox, you can see it did send us new Excel file, which has that data in it. And we can easily change this. So if we want to change the name, we want to move it somewhere else, we, whatever we want to do, all we have to do is change the value of our file name and path variable. So now this is going to become another new file.xls. And we can execute again. It's going to create a file called another new file.xls. You see it right there. And it's going to mail it to us. And oops, I uh, forgot to do it. And so there it is there. And there's another new file. Okay. Pretty cool. So I've attached with this video the actual content, the package, so that you can use that as a sort of a template, if you will, for building your own Gmail-based emailing packages. Gmail is kind of tricky to work with in SSIS, but if you have a nice little sample right there, it makes it easier.